I am making soap today. And I'm making two different kinds of soap. The first one I'm making is my super simple, easy, luxurious olive oil soap. This has five different oils on it. You can get the recipe at livingonadime.com. Type in olive oil soap. Michael put a recipe in the link. Um, but <clears throat> this is my recipe that I love and I think just works, I mean, for everything. It just seems to be the best recipe I have found. And I just really like it. So I've already pre-mixed and pre-warmed my oils. Both of these are within about 90 degrees, give or take a few degrees. This is, I think, 95, and this is 98, I think. Um, so I'm slowly pouring my lye into my pre-mixed and warmed oil mixture. And I'm going to buzz it to a trace with my stick blender. Sorry, I forgot to plug it in here. And if you have any questions while we're going along, please tell me and I'll try to answer them as I go. This is an easier soap, unlike my mountain one I did the other day. <laughs> I don't have to concentrate quite as much. So I'm going to blend this until it comes to trace, and I'll show you what trace is. <laughs> blender a bowl is easier for this but I ran out of bowls so I put it over and it just kind of leaves little droplets and that's how you know it's come to trace and um, I am setting my other lye water I forgot to cool it down for my next soap because it's not quite cool yet um, now I've added this one I'm doing an experiment I wanted to try and add some fresh cream and um, see what that does. I have never added cream before. And what I did was I discounted my water for the amount of cream that I'm going to add. So um, I took out the amount of water to exchange for the amount of cream that I used. I'm going to buzz that up. <laughs> get the cream all mixed in there. Whoa, whoa, hello. Whoa, we got flying soap everywhere. There you go. I've never used this pitcher before. Usually I use my big bowl, but I'm doing that for my next one. <laughs> so this one is going to be my unscented, just like this one here, except I added cream. And I do have these for sale on my website at livingonadime.com. Um, the soap for sale, the link is in the description below. And so if you have sensitive skin, this is a great one to start with because you can, uh, a lot of people have problems with the colorants or the fragrance, and this one is un unscented and has no color. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it into my molds, just like so. And like I said, I'm just doing a test batch for this one because I just wanted to see how the cream reacts into my recipe. Real. But if you want this bar here, I have these ones currently for sale on the website. And they're $6. Questions? Well, Ramona, does that, do you have to use lye? Yes, you do. You cannot make soap without lye. Um, you do need to be careful with work, when working with lye, but it's not, it's not as dangerous as I saw a video the other day where the lady said she dumped a pot of boiling water on her and that was a lot worse and that's the truth. I mean, I get lye on me all the time and I just rinse it off and it, I have a little sting and that's it. Maybe if you have super, super sensitive skin, you would want to be more careful, but I don't and I splash it on me. Not splash it, but, you know, I'll just occasionally get a little piece on my um, hands or whatever when I'm washing the dishes, that kind of thing. And isn't it true that when the lye is in there, the chemical reaction changes so it's not 
Yes. When it's in the soap, it's not going to burn. Yes, Mr. Man behind the camera. Thank you. So you can go ahead and do me. To my high school chemistry. <laughs> so in the lye or in lye soap, after you have mixed the lye in the oils, it starts changing. It's called sponification. And after you, you let it sit for um, four to six weeks, all the lye is absorbed by the oil and has changed into soap. And that's what makes soap. And like these bars here, I will leave them in the mold and unmold them in 24 hours and then I'll let them sit for four to six weeks. And you can let them cure like this one has been curing for three months. So it's a good hard bar of soap, but um, you can use it after four to six weeks. And like I said, you can get these on my website at livingonadime.com. I put the um, article in there and these are unscented and um, no colors in them also. This is just the pure soap. So that's how fast it really is to make soap. I mean, it took me longer setting everything up for the video than it did to actually make the soap. So you got any questions? Uh, several, but Ramona, who asked about the lye, says, I have very sensitive skin. So I guess that was her concern. Okay, so if you have sensitive skin and you're wanting to make your own soap, just use gloves and wear long sleeves. It's really hot here, so I'm not wearing long sleeves, but just wear long sleeves and gloves. And of course, goggles are a good idea, and you should be fine. Um, you know, you really don't have a problem. It's really not that huge of a problem. Um, I'm going to start making my next soap while I'm answering questions. You can go ahead and, well, let me test. Let me see. Just a second. It may not. Okay, my lie's not quite ready yet, so I'll let it cool down for just a minute more. Do we have any other questions while it's cooling? Are you testing that? I'm sure they would last. Oh. So I'm testing my lye to see what the temperature is, and it's still 121, but I want it down a little bit lower, close to 100, because my oil is 97, and you want your oil and your lye to be within 10 degrees of each other. So if this is 96, then I want my lye to be uh, no more than 106, and or... I don't want it to be 86. So within 10 degrees of each other, they say. Um, and I'm almost there. My lie is 120, 20 now, so I'm getting super, super close. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Well, I was just going to say to follow up for Ramona. Just so the sensitive skin would be an issue when you're making the soap that you'd want to wear the gloves, but when the soap is set, you so when this worry about it yeah, anymore. so when the soap has got to this point, this is cured. After four to six weeks and you have a bar like this, you should be able to use it. And this is actually really good for sensitive skin. If you have skin problems, you know, it really is helpful and it doesn't have the chemicals. So it's a really nice chemical free way of um, having, a, you know, a good bar of soap because the lye, like I said, disappears and is sponified afterwards. So you don't have it in there anymore. I'm not sure what this means, but Missy said, how many flavors of scents you have? Me... Oh, how many flavors and scents do I have? Oh, I see. Currently, right now, I have about 35 different ones. I have about 35 different flavors already made up and ready to go. I've done a couple of quilt shows and gun shows, and um, they, well, they were a bomb, but it wasn't me that was a bomb. It was the show. It was one of those things where it was the first really nice weekend of the month and everybody was out doing their stuff and, and things like that. So it wasn't me. Actually, I did better than anybody else there. <laughs> so um, I have a made up. I only have, I think, about 10 or so on my website right now. And as I get some of them sold, I'm putting new ones on there. So if you go to livingonadime.com, type in or search soaps for sale soap for sale and you'll see my soaps that i have and some of these that i'm making on here will be on there now this one that i'm doing right now is a uh, berry cherry soap and i have mixed black raspberry scent with black cherry scent is that right yeah 
So I've mixed those two and I'm going to make a berry cherry. And this is a purple and pink one with cherries on top that I'm making for a particular store here. Now my lie, my lie is down and it's ready. The temperature is 104 and this is 97. And can you see that little lint in there? Some lye, when you mix it up, it gets little lint in there. And I don't know why that happens. I need to research it. But I just run it through a strainer. And then it just catches those little tiny bits. Um, it's just called lye lint. And I have no idea. I need to research what the deal is with it. But honestly, I haven't really thought anything about it. Um, there were a few other questions. OK. Questions. Hillary said, I like to buy the soap you're making. Does it have moisturizer? Well, no, but the oils themselves are moisturizing. I use moisturizing oils, but, you know, I don't put an additional moisturizer in there. So I guess technically no, but it is a very moisturizing type of um, soap. David, can you go underneath the bar there? I'm going to get my faithful assistant. I just realized I forgot one of my colors. And look for the salad dressing on the right, the salad dressing. Yep. Can you hand that to me, please, or bring it to me? And oh. she asked, where do you buy lye? Um, so thank you, my faithful assistant. I buy my lye from the lye guy, but I buy it in, in bulk. Otherwise, if you're just doing small batches, just go to the hardware store. Look for drain cleaner that says 100% lye drain cleaner in with the drain cleaners that's what lye is is it's drain cleaner it's also oven cleaner just in case you were wondering and um you can buy just a little bottle of that i have a link in the description below to where i get my lye on amazon um when i don't need a huge batch but yeah i normally get a big batch okay i'm going to go ahead and mix this up and then i'll take some more questions <laughs> So I am doing that. And now I'm going to mix my colors. So in here I have purple, already pre-mixed. It's a purple mica, uh, purple vibrance from Nurture. And then I have, well, okay, that was kind of crazy. I put the pink, you can't really tell because I put it in the pink container, but I have the pink mica mixed in oil in the pink container. There's a little bit left there. Any questions while I'm doing this? Kathy asks, do you use separate mixing bowls when making the lye soap and then cooking? Uh, no, I don't. It's soap. And I know people, OK, I'm testing out my new, these are new, oh, brother. Um, these are new pitchers that I've never used before. And they're kind of wobbly. That's a little weird. Um, no, it's soap. And so I just wash it out and move on and cook dinner. Um, some, okay, I can see I'm going to have to get a different bowl. This one just is not working very well. Um, yeah, I might use that next. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I have to ask, can you only use stainless steel utensils when mixing a lye? Um, you could use wood. And I do use plastic. I do use these spatulas, and it works just fine. I don't have any problems with that. So no, I don't use just stainless steel. Um, 
Okay, so here's my purple mixed in the soap. Can you see that? There. Okay. And then I have my pink done and I have a big mess here. So I'm trying to decide though, I'm doing two containers if that is enough. Wow, I think I'm going to add just a little bit more. Um, I'm doing this for a special order. And so um, if she continues to order, I'm going to get a better system down to where I measure everything and get it all exact. But right now, until she decides if she's going to be a regular customer or not, um, I'm just kind of winging it. Okay, so I'm adding my fragrance oils here, which are already mixed. Aren't my measuring cups cute? I love these. Um, yes, any other questions? Marie Louise asks, when choosing scents for soap, what should we look out for? An essential oil, synthetic, etc. Um, so essential oils and fragrance oils are totally different. And they work totally different. Fragrance oils will last. I'm putting my titanium dioxide that's pre-mixed in my oil here. Um, fragrance oils will last a lot longer than essential oils. So it just kind of depends on what you're using them for. I use mostly fragrance oils. Not always, but I use a lot of fragrance oils. And so... Um, I do like the fragrance because there are just so many cool choices. I mean, like I said, this is black raspberry vanilla and black cherry that I'm doing. And it just, can you guys smell it? <sighs> Mike and Dave? It can smell it from over here, but I oh. smelled it the other day when I was Did here. You? Oh, man, it just smells so incredibly good. Um, okay, so now I'm going to pour it in. And this one I'm swirling, so I, I want my batter kind of loose. And I just made a mistake. Do, 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 do. I put too much batter in. And Stephanie was asking, do you use that stick blender for food too or just soap making? Nope, I use it for food. I mean, it's soap. You just wash it away and you're done. So it's not real... Um, I, I just, I don't have a problem with that. I know other people do, and this, there was a huge thing on a soap, there was a huge debate on a soap thing that I'm on the other day, a soap Facebook group, and they were going back and forth about it, and personally, I just, I don't see what the problem is. Okay, so let's see if this works. I'm going to swirl it. Okay, half in that one, and I'm swirling. Hmm, I had more purple than I thought I did. Um, so yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the reason would be. There was a reason and it sounded, oh, I know what it was. They said, we were talking about crock pots actually, and they were saying how the lye will etch a crock pot and I don't know I mean yeah I guess it will but I don't know what the problem with that is because my crock pot is etched now I'm doing the pink I'm just going all over oops um, I don't know what the problem would be because it's not like my crock pot is leaving flecks of stuff all over everything so I'm not sure what the problem is. So that's my two cents on the whole using the same utilitals. It's just soap. You just clean it up and move on with life and yeah. So any other questions? Karen says, what kind of a thermometer are you using? Um, so I have a link in the description on YouTube, right? But it's just a digital thermometer. So yeah, Boop. you can just see it reads the temperature. Okay, now I'm going to take a chopstick and just kind of mix this just a little bit so it has more swirls. And I forgot to have Mike do the picture on this one, but that's all right. 
I actually have another video of me making this, but I was just adding this one live since I was already on here. Okay, and then I just gently swirl it. I don't want to mix it so it's all purpley. There, okay. Then I'm going to put, whoa, okay, I don't like those buckets. Hmm, glad I only paid, okay, I only paid 10 cents for these, but they're wobbling all over the place. So I don't really like those. I think I'm gonna have to find me. What I want is some stainless steel um, pitchers. That I think would just be awesome, but I'm not about to spend the money on it at the moment since I'm not doing this for a lot at the moment. Yes. Um, let me blend this for just a second. So I'm mixing this up because this is not thick enough yet and I need it on the top. just a couple of minutes until I finish this to let it get thicker. And while I'm doing that, I will answer some more questions. Hopefully there's more questions. Otherwise, I'll just be sitting here looking beautiful. Yes, you will be. While I only have, how many days do I have left here? I have two, two days left. Until Give Mom All the Kisses She Wants Day. Until Give Mom All the Kisses She Wants Day. Give Mom All the Kisses She Wants Day is in two days. I tell my kids that. I've told them that since they were, well, since they could talk. And Jack, what is give mom all the kisses she wants day? Basically meaning mom's birthday, but you just want more kisses. <gasps> what? Yes. I just want more kisses? Yes. Are you sure? Of course. <laughs> yes, it's mom's birthday, but mom tries to sneak in more kisses. Because... Cause can you smell it? Does it smell good? Yeah, here, come so here. Does it smell, it smell good? good? Here, come smell. Oh yeah, it smells. That actually smells really good. You like it, huh? Mm -hmm. That's that's berry cherry. Does it look berry cherry? Yeah. So can you wait for give mom a kiss? She wants to. Yes. <gasps> Why? <laughs> no. Sort 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 of. I'm, I'm not sure. How many kisses are you gonna give me? Thousands. Probably millions. Yes. Two. Millions? Only two. Two. Two? Probably mostly the <laughs> probably mostly all the ones that you want. All the ones that I want, huh? Oh, thank you. Mom loves her kids. Yes, mom tries to sneak in more kisses on her birthday and Mother's Day, so she calls it give mom all the kisses she wants day, but <laughs> all right, back to questions. Sorry. Uh somebody was asking oh, when we were talking about the different utensils and things, Rosalind said, don't use aluminum with lye. Yes, this is true. Thank you, Rosalind. Do not use aluminum pans or aluminum utensils or aluminum pitchers, nothing, because the, alum the lye will eat the aluminum. So yeah, don't do that. That would be not good. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that because that's a really good point. Stainless steel and plastic and glass are the best. Glass can etch. And don't mix your lye and your water in a glass pitcher or a glass anything because it could crack it because your lye gets really high, like up to 200 degrees. So, or like 180, I don't know, 180, 200 degrees. So it can get really, really hot. So, um, so Hillary, oh, not Hillary. Karen said, what did you add to your uncolored soap? Nothing. I mean, I this is just the oils and the lye. So in here I have olive oil, avocado oil, castor oil, palm oil, and what's my other oil? <laughs> uh, coconut oil. Coconut oil. Um, so that's the five oils I have in here and then lie. So yeah, and now the dog escaped and he's clicking everywhere. Sorry guys. Yes. Next question. Now I'm going to start putting on my top. See how it's gotten thicker. And so I'm going to put, I'm going to start spooning it on top here. So go ahead and we'll answer questions while I'm spooning it here. Susan and Karen and Heather all said happy birthday. Oh, thank you guys. And Stephanie says, what a cutie. I think about Jack. Oh. I mean, you're a cutie too, but. Do you get your good looks from your mom and your charm from your dad? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oops. Ramona says, good for watering plants. I'm not sure what she's referring to. Oh, my to. pictures that I don't like for mixing. Oh, yeah, right. that's a good idea. I could use them for watering plants. Although, I have a massive amount of plants. I mean, my garden is huge. And so... Good for houseplants. It would be great if I had houseplants. What's kind of funny is... See, oops. Oh, boy, I'm spilling this all over. Is um, I don't really like houseplants anymore. I mean, I do a little bit, but... Now that I've had been able to garden and have my own house, I like doing the outside stuff better. Oh, so Karen, when she asked what you added to your planes, your regular soap, I forgot what it was, but the uncolored soap, she says she was asking about the white and green bottle. Oh, excuse me. I see what you're saying. Okay, so that's titanium dioxide that I mixed in oil in an old salad dressing bottle. And this way, I got a couple marbles in there, and I can just shake it up when I need to. And I keep this on hand because I use the white a lot. So that's titanium dioxide. And where do you get that? Um, Amazon has it. And I'll put a link in the description in YouTube. Okay. And Catherine asks, is Crisco lard? Crisco is not lard. Crisco is, I think, a palm oil. I'm not sure. Um, if anybody knows for sure, I can, I don't know. Um, but Crisco and lard are not the same. Lard is pig fat that has been rendered and is, um, and is ready for you to go. Jack, can you hand me a spoon, please? Okay, I'm sorry. I have to take off my gloves. I know all the safety police are going to start yelling at me, but it is just too hot in here. Just a spoon is fine. We're here in Colorado where it's 97 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're in Colorado, so at least it cools down at night. Okay, but I'm not going to touch anything. Okay, other questions? Uh, Shala asks, do you ever use goat's milk base? I've never made soap before, but I'm wondering how moisturizing and cost-effective it is. Um, cost-effective, it's not. It's pretty expensive, actually, unless you have your own goats, which some people do. Um, so if you have to buy goat's milk, it's kind of expensive, although you don't use a whole lot in a loaf of soap. Um, it is very moisturizing, although I don't really notice that it's a great amount of moisturizing. I mean, it is, but um, it's, uh, I, I don't think it's worth the extra, but that's why I'm trying the cream when we first started here, that's why I'm trying the cream because I want to see what it does because it's a little bit cheaper than goat's milk and I know a lot of soapers will use cream in there. Um, so now I'm just kind of texturing the top before I put on my cherries. Oh, here. Go ahead. Maddie and Off the Grid Homestead both said that it looks so pretty with the colors swirled in. That was, I guess, before you put the top on there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, actually, I'm really mad that I forgot to have Mike get the picture on there because it's really pretty um, inside uh, with the pink and purple and white. And I have a good picture of it, but we can't load it now since we're already live. Okay, so now I'm going to start adding my cherries. Did anybody else have any questions? And I divided my loaf into eight sections, so I'm going to get eight bars out of here. And then I'm going to let this cure for 24 hours, and then I'm going to take it out of the loaf and cut it. No, I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours, and I'm going to take it out of the loaf and cut it, and then cure for four to six weeks. So, yeah. Hillary, who asked about the plain soap earlier, uh -huh. uh, she said I was, she had had follow-up that was, I was wondering, because I'm looking for fragrance-free with lots of moisturizer. This one's, yeah, I mean, this, this here actually has extra moisturizing because I added um, additional oil to this one that was not absorbed by the by the lye. So I made this one purposely extra moisturizing. So if you want a bar that has extra oil in it, this is your bar for you. Um, I made it, actually, this is a great beard soap. This is why I made it in the first place for my son who has a beard. Um, I made it for him to use on his beard. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to stand up, Mike, while I do this, just so if you need to do the camera. Okay. So now I'm putting on my cherries. So go ahead. 
Um, Robin says, do you make for those of us that have really sensitive skin? So I'm thinking she's asking if you So make. yes, Robin, that's what this is here. This is my sensitive skin bar and I have it for sale up on Living on a Dime. This bar looks slightly different um, than the picture that's on there. This one's going down and the other one's going up, but it's the same bar. So if you want it, go to go to the link that Mike put on there and you can have you can buy it. It's on there. Oops, let me put that link on again. Mike's putting the link on again for you. Um, Sadie's asking, what are the cherries for? So I'm doing a special order for a cherry shop here that um, she wanted a cherry soap and she could, she sells anything that's cherry. And so that's why I'm putting the cherries on because it's a berry cherry soap. Oh, uh, Hillary, who asked about the moisturizer. After what you just now said, she said, sweet, my daughter's doctor told me to get something like that. I can't find it anywhere. What's it called? Oh, so for me, it's just unscented soap. So just go there, and I think it's the second soap on the list, and it's unscented soap. And if your doctor recommended it, this is the soap for you. It's really a good moisturizing bar, and I think you'll love it. As a matter of fact, I just had a lady who had the same problem order eight bars because she wanted um, she wanted to make sure she didn't run out. <laughs> Ramona asks, how do you make the cherries? So I have a little mold. Um, oh, it's in the laundry room. Jack, could you go get my mold or Dave, one of you? I'll have one of the boys go grab it for me. Um, I have a little mold that I made. And I took silicone caulk and made my own homemade mold by just taking caulk and putting it in water with Dawn dish soap. And yeah, can you grab it around the corner there? It's in the laundry room. And you mix your silicone in your Dawn. I did a video on it that we don't have up yet. And um, then I got some real cherries. Thankfully, it's cherry season. And I pushed them in there and let it set. It's not in there. Yeah, it's next to the laundry basket on the floor. Mm -hmm. hmm. Stephanie asked, where do you put all your soap secure? Um, I have racks down in my basement, so yeah, we have an unfinished basement, but okay. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate it. Okay, good. Thank you, Jack. So Jack got it for me. Um, so see, I just made my own homemade soap mold here, and this is just silicone caulk that I made, and then I put the cherries in there. You and then the real cherries, didn't you, when you made the mold? Yeah, and I made the mold, and then I took melt and pour soap after the cherries were I mean after it was done I took melt and pour soap and poured colored it and poured it in there that's how I got my cherries uh did I refer you to question from Beverly why is it important to cure the soap no okay I'm gonna sit down now since I'm done okay so I'm done now and Beverly wants to know why you need to cure your soap um because the lye and the oils mix together and there's a chemical reaction called spawnification and after four to six weeks of curing the lye has completely absorbed the oils or vice versa i can't remember which way it goes but anyway they're completely turned into soap <laughs> and your bars are dried out and nice and hard so like this one's been curing for four weeks or i mean for for three months and so it's nice and hard and it's a really good cure. So a bar like this, if you use it every single day, will last you about a month if you let it dry out on a soap dish in between um, in between uses. So like if you're in the shower, and don't let it don't let the shower water run on it either. I mean it'll just melt away if you just keep running and running on it. So I just have mine on my little shelf in the corner, and then um, it lasts about a month. So. And Ramona asks, will high humidity make it need to cure longer? No, not really. No, I haven't heard that. Okay. And Lenore says, so the lard is Crisco. It's not Crisco. No, lard and Crisco are not the same. David can, or Mike, whoever, can somebody grab the shortening out of the... And while I'm getting it, Lenore also asks, do you cover the bars? To Other side cure? on the bottom. Um, no, you do not want to cover your bars to let it cure because you want airflow so that they'll dry out 
and the excess water will evaporate. So what is shortening made out of? Well, it Let's says see. all vegetable shortening. So let me see what vegetable shortening is made out of. Soybean oil, palm oil. Yeah. So shortening is soybean oil and palm oil. And this does actually make a very good bar of soap. And I'm going to do a show one day on making a shortening soap. But lard is pig fat that has been rendered down. And so there is a difference between shortening and lard. And this one um, has the palm oil and a little bit of lard also in it, just to make it extra moisturizing. I love the shortening and the lard are very good moisturizing oils. So, um, Oops, sorry. Um, and Catherine's asking, is there a vegan option instead of eating lard? And that's what we're doing in olive oil, right? Yes. So this, um, yes. So what I would, so what I do for my vegan soap, which I do have some, if you want to buy a bar, just order the unscented and tell me you want the vegan. I just don't have it on there on my soap for sale. But my vegan option is olive oil, avocado oil, palm oil, castor oil, and coconut oil. So that's my vegan option. And it's the same soap, just without the lard. And it looks pretty much the same as this. Well, it is pretty much the same, but, um, but it is all vegan oils. So cool. Um, oh, yeah. Tammy asked if she's able to purchase your soap, so I will put the link in for that. Yes. Mike's putting a link on Facebook that you can go and purchase them. Please purchase them or my great, great grandkids are going to be using my soap because I got into this hobby and I just kind of went crazy having so much fun and and I've made my money back with sales that I've done. But, you know, we have a lot of soap. I probably have five or six hundred bars of soap down there now. So Karina asked or Karina says, I found the longer the cure time, the more sudsy the soap. That's interesting. I've never heard that because the suds are usually from coconut and castor oil in there unless the water evaporating maybe makes it do that although that doesn't really make sense to me so i'm not quite sure on that but that's interesting i've never heard that before i might try it and see cool um and i confused catherine because i pasted in the olive oil soap recipe but it says lard in there so what you were saying was different well that, right? yeah so my recipe that i have on there is the lard recipe but i'll do another post and i'll put up my vegan recipe in a couple of days um it's pretty much the same. I just exchange palm oil for lard. Bumblebee Junction says, great looking soap, guys. Thank <laughs> you, Bumblebee Junction. I'm going to have to check out your site. That sounds like a fun, a fun, fun too. Are you are I assuming YouTube? Yes, yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, I'll have to check out your YouTube channel. That sounds fun. And Ramona asks, do you cut it in slices to cure it? Yes, you cut it into slices to cure it. Um, because it can get too hard to cut afterwards. Um, I don't know. I've never tried just leaving a, a loaf. And I know some companies will sell you whole loaves. So I might try that one time and just see what happens. Because I think that'd be kind of cool to go to a craft show and just cut off the amount that they want. So You should make like cakes and sell the entire thing. Yeah, I do make soap cakes. My son just said you should make cake. I do make soap cakes and pies. And so, and I do have, I think, a cherry chocolate pie on for sale. That was that was one that I made. But yeah, um, I've never let it go without cutting it. So I might make a loaf and try that and see what happens. Karina, who made the comment about the longer the cure time, the more sudsy the soap. She says hers is Castile soap. Yeah, that's just olive oil soap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, is that all my questions for today? At the moment. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me. If you would like to purchase my soap, you can go to livingonadime.com and click on soaps for sale um, in the search bar or on the link in the description below or on the link in Facebook. Please visit us at livingonadime.com. We're going to be back Saturday at 6 p.m. with the Homestead Network. Mike and I are going to be talking about something. What are we going to talk about? I don't know. We might be talking about fear and debt. We've been wanting to talk on that. Mike did a really cool video. You guys have got to see. He did a good job. Even gave me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. 
It was good. So um, Saturday at 6 p.m. we will be on YouTube again and Facebook. So please visit us. And of course, as always, Monday and Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Mountain Time. These are all Mountain Times. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And I think that's it. We'll see you later.